Hello, I'm William Slattery of the House Clinic. In this video, we'd like to review the more common ear instruments, reviewing their names, their usage, and a little history about each of the instruments. In ear surgery, you have two types of instruments. You have the straight instruments that have something different on the end, um, or you have the two finger instruments that are used. So the number one knife either has a small length to it or a fairly broad length. So I use the number one both for making my initial incisions when we're doing lateral graft techniques. We create the tipital mastoid, tipital, tipital squamous suture line incisions. Those are the first incisions we make when doing lateral graft technique. And so you need a fairly long shaft and a fairly tight knife so it really cuts through the tissue along the tipital mastoid, tipital squamous suture line. I love to use this one for dissecting uh, soft tissue, for example, dissecting the cholesteatoma uh, off of structures in the ear. The uh, number one knife or sickle knife works very well for that. And this would be then a number two knife. It's a triangular instrument, it's very sharp. This instrument uh, was actually used prior to some of the sharper instruments. Now you have beaver blades. The number two knife was used to actually make your initial incision. And the idea was it was very sharp, but as it was, uh, as you were actually making the, the incision in the tympanal medial flap, you were actually compressing blood vessels. So you'd actually take it, uh, make an indentation, move over a millimeter, make an indentation, move over a millimeter, make an indentation. This is a round knife. The round knife was described by Jim Sheehy is one of his favorite instruments, so that he called it a weapon. <laughs> the, and I asked him, why a weapon? And he says, well, it's my secret weapon. And I will usually use this at the very beginning of the case to elevate the ear canal while we're entering into the middle ear space. I also find this very helpful at lifting up the annulus. When it's very sharp, it can actually get into the groove of the annulus and lift the fibrous annulus out of the eardrum. This is basic for any ear surgeon. You know, in medicine we have the caduceus, which is the symbol of, med of doctors with the staffs and the snakes wrapping around it. You could almost say that the round knife or the weapon is the, is the symbol of an ear surgeon uh, because it's so common to what we do. This next instrument is a Rosen needle. The Rosen needle uh, was actually uh, developed by Sam Rosen and I think my understanding was it was developed to actually pick out parts of otosclerosis as part of a stapes mobilization uh, procedure. Uh, it's a very sharp needle uh, with a uh, tip. It's kind of rounded on the tip. Uh, many times you'll see a blunt and a sharp rosin needle. The sharp rosin needle is my workhorse instrument. This is the instrument that I like to use the most. I like the sharp rosin needle uh, when I'm first entering in the middle ear space. I'll use it to actually separate some of the bands. I'll use it to elevate up the annulus uh, as I'm entering into the middle ear space. And I find it very helpful at dissecting cholesteatoma away from uh, other uh, uh, from the oscules and from other uh, middle ear uh, structures. We call this a gimmick because it is so useful for many other things. Uh, we use it as an annulus elevator, but we also use it to dissect the dura. Once you have the ear canal skin during stapedectomy elevated to the level of the annulus, you can put this in and you can sweep this around uh, to elevate the annulus. I use the gimmick more in skull base surgery than I do in middle ear surgery. I find it helpful when I'm pulling a temple amino flat back into position. The uh, gimmick uh, does not have a sharp surface so it tends to not stick to structures and it's very helpful when you want something that is blunt. The curette is, has a number of valuable uses including uh, removing bone of the ear canal. It can be used for dissection of disease out of the mastoid air cells. It can be used for removal of the final sheets of bone from a surfer's ear operation or an exostosis surgery when the drill has, has taken the bone down to the tympanic membrane and the last shelves of bone are, are being removed without injury to the ossicular chain. So a curette is, is important for what we do. One important function for these curettes for residents is these are meant to be used as a fulcrum. So the idea is that you, as you're curetting, you want to have it rest up against uh, the speculum as you're curetting. It's a twisting motion. So it's a twisting motion as you curette, and it's a fulcrum motion. So you're actually using the curette to get a little bit more power to curette the bone. 
Um, it's also important to make sure that your curettes are, have been sharpened. Uh, sometimes curettes will get very dull, especially in residency programs where the curettes have been around for a long time. Uh, so that's when it's helpful to get uh, either new curettes or actually have those serviced. The sharp right angle hook uh, is an instrument that would be used to measure. It might be used to measure uh, distances. It, would, it might be used to perforate into an area. Um, it, it might be used to remove an ossicle uh, from the ear or potentially uh, dissect around a corner uh, sharply. The right angle hook uh, is very helpful uh, for down fracturing the uh, stapy superstructure during stapedectomy. Uh, it can be very helpful for reaching around uh, sharp corners. The history of the barber needle is very interesting because during the early days of otosclerosis surgery, the technique involved making a small hole in the safety's foot plate as a control hole and using an instrument like this in order to free up the stapes in order to remove the stapes foot plate. There wasn't any instrument like this and Howard House asked his nurse, is there any kind of a sharp needle? And she said, well, let me see. And she took a small hook, she took it home she went to her garage where she had a grinding machine. She ground down the hook, made a very sharp needle, brought it back to him the next day, gave it to him to see, well, how does this work? And he goes, that's perfect. I'm going to call it a barber needle because her name was Barbara Corliss. I use it often during cochlear implant surgery to perforate the round window prior to the round window membrane prior to placing the implant. Uh, that's primarily what I use it for, although it's, it can be used for any dissecting uh, role where a curved instrument is not needed. The incus hook is used to separate the incus from the malleus. Uh, it's helpful for pulling the incus out of the epitympanic space and removing it from the middle ear space. Uh, the three millimeter hook is also very useful for other dissections. We use it a lot in skull base surgery for dissection of the tumor. Uh, having this sharp hook uh, to separate the tumor away from the facial nerve, for instance, can be very helpful. Uh, we also use this uh, hook uh, for removing cholesteatoma in the middle ear space. This is a cerumen curette or a blue ear loop. Uh, two functions for that one, just simply to clean the ear canal of wax. Jim Sheehy, who taught me uh, chronic ear surgery, uh, would use this to place the fascia beneath the malleus handle. You know, when we do a tympanoplasty, uh, you always want to, we, we use a lateral graft technique, but you always want to stabilize the fascia beneath the malleus handle. This is the measuring rod. This is to measure the distance uh, that you use a, a stapes prosthesis. Uh, some people don't use a measuring uh, device. Uh, they use a standard prosthesis, but we find that this may vary as much as a millimeter. Uh, all the way from 3.5 to 4.5 millimeters. So uh, this is placed, uh, there's a little tiny notch here that goes on the top of the incus. That goes down to the foot plate to measure the distance. This instrument, which is very difficult to see, is a very small, we call a foot plate hook. And what we, we used this for primarily was in the early days of stapedectomy, is to remove parts of the foot plate and they were angled. There were two different angles. One was called an anterior, and the other was bent the other direction. It was called a posterior. Being left-handed, I had to say, ask for the opposite. Once I'm inside the ear, oftentimes I'll move to the hockey stick or crabtree. So Dr. James Crabtree was a physician who was part of the, at that time, the Otologic Medical Group, who actually taught me during my training so through his work, he developed an instrument that allowed separation of soft tissue away from overhanging areas, especially like if you're dealing with the scutum, you couldn't really see back into the mastoid. So there became both a small and large crabtree dissector. He uh, developed this to get around corners. For example, we have a little cholesteatoma underneath the annulus. We can use this instrument in order to shell out the cholesteatoma. The whirly bird, there's usually two different kinds of whirly birds. One is a very uh, thin whirly bird, and the other one is a heavier whirly bird. I use this 
in facial nerve decompression. I think it was designed to dissect cholesteatoma. It's a fairly robust instrument, has a lot of strength to it, and uh, after you, do you remove the bone down to an eggshell thickness on the facial nerve, I use this to chip off the bone as a final uh, way to decompress the facial nerve for uh, or to mobilize it in the infratemporal fossa approach, things like that. The strut guide is used to guide a strut, and in this case, during a wire operation, so for example, during the first use of wires for Stapes operations, Dr. Howard House had the house wire, and the strut guide was used to guide the curved portion or the crook portion of the wire over the incus as it was placed to, to be crimped in position. And so the notch was actually used to engage the curved aspect of the crook. And we still use it for that purpose today in stapes surgery. The primary use of uh, a cup forceps would be to remove disease, uh, cholesteatoma off of an ossicle, uh, dissection of disease out of uh, the middle ear or the mastoid, primarily I would say middle ear or, er or areas thereby, and uh, just a grasping instrument with a fairly sharp cup. Uh, that can engage uh, fine disease such as cholesteatoma. One of the arts that we're losing perhaps a little bit is the art of crimping. Uh, a crimper is used to crimp a stapes prosthesis crook over the incus. Um, that's its primary role. It's still used in that purpose today. We still have to crimp prostheses because we can't always use laser uh, crimped prostheses. And a crimper has a curve to it. It almost looks kind of like a little bit like a, an alligator head that's been tipped downward. And generally it's placed downward over the crook and then with a for placing it forward, it's used to crimp. So the way it's used is to try to, instead of just pinching the process, is you're trying to curve the prosthesis over the incus. And so that's part of the reason why it's engaging in that direction. The alligator forceps is another one of our two finger instruments. Uh, it is a very versatile instrument uh, used, for instance, for putting tympanostomy tubes in place, holding tympanostomy tubes. It uh, can be used for uh, holding a cotton ball, to put a cotton ball with local anesthesia into the ear. It, it, it can grip things quite tightly, so you have to be careful. Uh, it'll actually squeeze things. So for instance, tissue, uh, you may not want to grab tissue with the alligator forceps because it can actually uh, uh, grab too tightly. Strut forceps are using more fine. We use a strut forceps to grab the strut of the stapes prosthesis. The goal of strut forceps is actually to hold your stapes wire in place so as you're putting the prosthesis into position, uh, it's holding it uh, in the right position. Bellucci scissors, uh, Richard Bellucci was a, an ear surgeon, and Bellucci scissors are used for cutting. I also use them in almost a dissecting role at times. I use them to cut the tympanometal flap uh, vascular strip portion in a stapes operation in the ear canal. I often use it as a cutting and then dissecting role because it has a nice flat edge to it. It can be used to dissect. Uh, it's used for cutting the annulus, if you're removing part of the annulus or removing disease portion of the tympanic membrane, it has a variety of cutting roles. The uh, House Dieter Malleus Nipper. Uh, this is used in cases where you want to amputate the malleus head. You would place this beneath the neck of the malleus and close it. It's a fairly uh, robust instrument and uh, is quite firm and, and quite sturdy so that it will fracture the head of the malleus uh, at the neck. We hope that you'll review this video commonly, especially if you're new to ear surgery, so you have a better understanding of the instruments used. In our accompanying video, we also review how the operating room should be set up. We encourage you to review that video as well.